Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to some low effort content. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Duel Link's best decks video that he uploaded three weeks ago. Dear Konami, it's time to fix your game. I've been personally waiting to react to this video because I wanted to do my first reaction to this video. I wanted to do the reaction before Zexor World came out, but I got way too busy with a bunch of random stuff. But we are here now. And let me know what you guys think of a video like this before, because I've never done a reaction video or like an official reaction video on this YouTube channel. And I really do like watching reaction videos as long as they're edited well i watch a ton of channels that do that and i've noticed some other Yu-Gi-Oh youtubers and pokemon youtubers have been doing reactionary content too so i decided to put my own mix in it and that's what we're going to be doing in today's video now before we get into the reaction video though i gotta give a big shout out to all my youtube members at the chaos dragon levine tier and the misty treadwell only fans tier thank you so much to mr kale 1354 and hfa recon for being misty treadwell only fan members and thank you so much to hazard exury hope to cruise and zornella for being youtube members at the chaos dragon levine tier well, without further ado let's get into today's reaction on dear konami fix your game and this is gonna be something interesting boys and girls ladies and gentlemen because your boy loom likes the memes and whatnot so oh boy i am ready for this i am ready for this let's get into it and all oh, it's a discussion rant casey cup i am really late when it comes to this too because the casey cup has been gone eons ago for what it feels like right now but hey let's just get into it boys first reaction let's go starts. this content is going to be a little different than my normal stuff why is there a loli at the start of this video? Deadass, Loom is gonna throw me in the jail already in the first five seconds. I am not okay with this. If you do enjoy it or have any feedback at all, comments, likes, and most importantly, hitting the sub button if you wanna see me. That is true. I should have already said this at the beginning of the video, but yeah, for real. Go check the video out, link in the description down below. Be sure to give Duel Link's best decks, aka Loom, a visit onto his YouTube channel. Be sure to go subscribe to him if you haven't already, because yeah, I'm just stealing his content anyways. So don't like and subscribe to my channel. If you want to, you could, but just just do it for Loom first. Anyways, let's get into it. More of these will be very much appreciated. To let Why me is there so many lolies here? Stop, Loom. I don't want the FBI to get after me. FBI, open up! That time again. It is not that time again because I'm three weeks late on this. Time where Konami puts all content releases on hold for half a month so we can grind our way through the train wreck of an event known as the KC Cup. Yeah, I do agree. The one thing that really sucks about Duel Links, especially before Zexa World came out, is just how stale it was before Zexa World came out. Because there's way too many times for being a player that's been playing the game for literal years now, there's just so much stale stuff to do. Like, there's just nothing to do in the game. And it's annoying when we have something like the Casey Cup, where we've already experienced this event so many times after playing the game for so many years, and it takes up like about two weeks of Duel Links. So there's like nothing fresh to do for two weeks except Casey Cup. It really sucks for content creators and long-term players, that's for sure. For the competitive people, it is okay for them, but I feel like they're also kind of sick of the Casey Cup in some ways too. So yeah, it really sucks how stale it is with the Casey Cup. I don't like it. So for those of you who have never experienced the Cup... I will say, though, the KC Cup gems are very nice. I always welcome the KC Cup gems. They're very nice. But I think what they really need to do, too, and he might loom my mention in the video, is that they probably should, like, release, like, events and the KC Cup at the same time. Like, we should have, like, the PvE events that are fun to do and the KC Cup at the same time. I feel like that would be a good idea. Cup before. I'll give you a brief rundown of how it works. So the Cup is broken down into two stages. The first stage starts 10 days before the second, yep. and in that time you can grind your way through a miniature ranked ladder, gaining a buttload of gems along the way Hog champ? to reach dual level max, at which point you'll qualify to play in stage 2 of the event. And this is where I recommend most of you stop playing. That me! That me! Last KC Cup I played stage 2 just once, got one win, got that 100% win rate, and just dipped. I just was like, hey, I got my 100% win rate. I am out of here, bro. That's me. Loom calling me out. Stage 2 lasts 3 days and consists of a point-based ranking system that will start you off at 0. That was literally my record right here. All I did was one win and bounce, bro. <laughs> points, and as you win games, your points will increase. Pog as champ. you lose games, decrease. Matching you against players with similar point totals along the way. And by the end of the event, the person with the highest amount of points. Oh my goodness, your mom topped last KC Cup. That's actually yes. insane. Will receive the grand prize of a ticket to compete in the World Championship event. By now, you've probably already read the title of this video, and therefore know my take on the event is clearly not going to be a Thumbs good one. Thumbs down. I'm okay with the event, but like I said earlier in the video, I just wish that we had other events to coincide with the KC Cup. I feel like if they just did that, it would they could still release KC Cup, but then also have the other players happy with something else to do. Before we cover the negatives. 
Let me just cover all the good things this event actually good does. Good things, let's go! So first and foremost, the most important thing this event does is provide a competitive event for the player yes, base. Yes, I agree. who have a competitive Big mindset, agree. The King of Games grind every month most definitely does not cut it. It does not cut it, facts. Right. Honestly, I have reached King of Games. <laughs> And if I can reach King of Games, anybody else can reach King of Games. You only just need to put a little bit of effort into the game, my friend. So yes, I agree that the King of Games is not as competitive as Casey Cup. They're two different ball games. Actual ranking inside of King of Games to show you where you stand amongst other high rated players. So you can never truly know how good you are. Exactly. Or how good like I said, I've reached King of Games before and I'm terrible at the game. So big facts here, big facts. Cog actually makes you, which to be fair, Cog is probably designed this way on purpose, as it can make a lot of players feel really good about their own skill due to reaching the highest rank possible, without ever hitting them with a large number saying, hey, you are the 20,000th person to hit King of Games, which obviously- where does, Oh yeah, by the way, throughout this entire video, where the hell, Loom, let me know in like Discord or something, or where the hell you found all these images for the video, because some of these images you've been using in this entire video are goofy as all hell, dog. Makes the rank seem a lot less exclusive. So this event can try and help fill the void a lot of competitive players look for, with an actual ranked ladder to climb through, amongst yes. other high rated players to prove- Yo, blue is looking kinda sus, not gonna lie. ...prove where they stand amongst them. Second thing the event does really well is stage one. Stage one is honestly fantastic. And I, I agree. I really find it hard to find ways to fault it, as it's essentially an easier rank grind that to take a lot less time due to less wins needed for rank up, to motion protection, etc. And it provides a rather Facts. insane amount of gems for just Facts. competing in the event. So this appeals to just what the heck was this? Yes, I did just want to see the butt again. Don't judge me. Smile. I'm going to take it the loom as an ass guy, not a titty guy. You know what? It's A-OK -okay with me. I'm more of a titty guy, but hey, I respect the loom. I respect it. Besides, a lot of the friends that I talk to, they're more ass people anyway instead of titty people. But hey, dog, I just want to drink some milk. I don't want to eat shit. That's just me, dog. Just about everyone. It appeals to veteran players who just want more gems and don't want to have to spend too much- Bro, this is the third time. Bro, my face cam's covering it, but this is the third time you use this image. ...time grinding before the second begins, and appeals to the newer or not as experienced players that want to take part in the cup as well, but probably won't have a chance to get a decent placing in stage two, so the achievement becomes simply reaching dual level max. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree with this point right here. And it is really well how Konami laid out the stage one. And if you didn't catch what he's basically explaining, so doing so many cuts in this video, basically what he's saying right here is that this like beginning part of this of KC Cup appeals to casual players because of the fact that it is just a simple rank up to dual level max. It's very easy to do. You get a bunch of gems. And for the players that are not super competitive but still want to participate in the KC Cup, they'll still get some satisfaction out of it just because it is an easy route to get to dual level max. Like you could be a bronze player and still get to do a level max if you really wanted to. So it's really good how Konami laid this out right here for the casual players, at least, because of the fact it is just so easy to get to do a level max with fantastic gems and rewards and all that good stuff. The other thing the event does well is, of course, the world's invite. Yes, a sir. A grand prize like this for an in-game based event is something you rarely see in any other game. That is true. Before COVID and everything else ruined the world championships for 2020, trying to achieve this was such a fantastic goal to reach. And if you did actually consistently top in the KC Cup and in the world champion event, I'll edit on screen what it's officially called. I think it's like the KC Grand Tournament or something like that. But yeah, if you topped in all those events, you would get an invitation to get flown out to Worlds wherever it's getting located and participate against the other players in the game that also reached the top. And it was just a fantastic way to do that. And you would be able to participate along with the TCG players, the Dragon Duels, and then the Duel Links. That was the three branches that happened in the World Championship. So before COVID messed it up, it was an awesome thing to have an opportunity to get to. So it was a fantastic goal to reach for. And that's why so many people grinded the KC Cup like crazy in 2017, 2018, and 2019 because of that invite to Worlds. Getting that free invite to Worlds is just amazing. Normally prizes for in-game events would be some nice cosmetics, maybe some nice in-game currency. <gasps> V-Bucks, let's go! But this event has a grand prize that can get you invited, and by invited- It is, it's the Wonka Golden Ticket, let's go! Invited, I mean an all expense paid trip to compete in a real tournament held in another country. So cool, that such an awesome opportunity. Insane, and drives the competition in the game quite a lot, making it something a lot of people find value in competing for. Now let's move on to the downsides of the cup, which in my opinion, vastly outweigh the positives. First and foremost, oh. <laughs> thank you so much to Spanos for subscribing to the channel. I was not expecting that. I appreciate it, my guy. 
the stage two grind. Stage two grind is horrible. I remember actively trying in the KC Cup before, and oh my god, it, is, it takes blood, sweat, and tears to try to get to the max level or to try to get the highest amount of DP compared to every other duelist. Oh, it was so terrible, terrible, terrible. This is by far the most terribly designed part of the cup. Yes, sir. This stage of the cup is active for three days, and the point system rewards people for playing more. And then Basically, what Loom is going to try to talk about here is that during this weekend where stage two is happening, it just only rewards just people that are able to religiously play this game. So while you could potentially be better than another player, the fact that this other player that you're trying to compete against has more free time on that weekend than you, they could get a higher level than you, even though you're technically a better player than them because you had other things to prioritize. So it doesn't really successfully evaluate how good you are. It just shows how well you can consistently play this game religiously. And if you have a total of three days, let me do the math real quick. 72 hours of your life to waste. I think I did the math right. I'll correct myself post editing. But yeah, if you have 72 hours of your life to waste on the set of weekend, and then you can grind KC Cup stage two religiously and get a high, very high rank. But if you don't, sucks to suck, even if you are potentially a better player than that other player. Therefore, for whatever reason, whether it be work, school, sports, yep. whatever. Stop it, Loom. Stop. I saw that. Sh Stop. Any real life responsibilities happen to fall upon one of these three days, you are immediately put at a massive disadvantage. As you yeah, even if it is just one day, because yeah, you can grind like the first day of the stage two and just get to a really high DP. But then the second day you have work or you have other priorities that you need to get done. And then all of a sudden you're going to be so low in the rank because of the other people willing to spend those other days to play the game. Poorly explaining it because I can't use my words properly. But yeah, you're just at a huge disadvantage if you can't play for even just one of the days. The highest probability of you being able to reach a high rank in stage two is if you have all three of those days available, which is not always possible in day to day life. I would no longer really take part in the grind. Even if there isn't a responsibility that falls upon one of these three days, that's three days straight. 72 hours minus. Sleep. I did do the math right. Let's fucking go. Time. You're expected to play in the event. I can't think of any other tournament anywhere that expects this kind of commitment. At the very least, there should be some downtime where everyone can take a break without being stressed on how many ranks they might drop if they stop to go play and go get some lunch. No kidding, yeah, that would be pretty nice. The other huge downside of this being a continuous three-day event is it simply supports major cheating. In the form Pog champ, cheaters. I really hope he has screenshots of the cheaters for this game because I remember so many times um in some of these KC Cups there would be somebody called Konami Fix Your Game and they would um have like the highest DP possible and reach max global rank one because of the fact that they're just straight up cheating. And what sucks for the players that actually do want to try and play the game legitimately, they queue against that cheater, they automatically lose, they lose a rank, and then the cheater gains a rank. So another great way to not properly really assess who's the better player let's go of account sharing oh i forgot about this too i completely didn't even know this was an issue but i could definitely see this see why it's an issue now they have measures in play to stop people swapping your accounts between different locations so it can be a lot harder to account share but if you have access to a remote desktop or simply have a friend irl who can also play dual links at a decent level Pog champ. You can now remove sleep from the equation, and Pog you can champ. simply play the game in shifts to maintain a decent ranking. So it's like the actual ranks of these players are completely skewed. Fantastic ranking system, Konami. And the worst part is it's been an issue for literal years now, like KC Cup has not changed that much dramatically, like at all. Is the point system itself. This system doesn't necessarily support the highest win rate player or the highest win rate deck. To put it simply, the system is much more rewarding to those who play more games with a decent win rate than to those that play fewer games with an insane win rate. So yeah, if you're a player that is just highly skilled at the game and you played like 30 games in total and basically like had an insane win rate, you can get to like 30k DP, right? But if you go against somebody that's played Duel Links in this stage two for the entire three days and did like 300 duels while they would have a way lower win rate than you they would still have a higher point count than you because of the fact they just did so many more duels it's a extreme example but i hope you kind of understand that yeah that person that has that max win rate but only played 30 games will only be at like 30k dp but that person that played around like 300 games can have a lot higher dp than 30k because of the fact that they just played so many different duels Someone who chooses to play a much slower deck that takes a ton of brain power and has a 65% win rate over 200 games 
will most likely lose out to someone who simply has an extremely fast brain dead deck that can rack out 1000 games with a 57% win rate. Now you tell me of the two people I just mentioned, who was the more skilled player who deserved the higher ranking? Technically the person was 65% win rate, but it only cares about DP, it doesn't care too much about the win rate. And that's why sometimes in the past, there was some very popular decks in the KC Cup, like Mast Hero. There was this Hero Mast Hero deck that topped the KC Cup because of the fact of just how fast paced it was. It was just like, burr, I summon or I activate Hatronade, summon my Mast Hero Anki, attack for game, brain dead. And it was a very fast paced deck that was able to really easily get out um, said monsters. And then also Destiny Hero Plasma was a fun guy to hang around with too and just steal your opponent's monster. But yeah, the Mass Heroes was like topped a couple times in the KC Cup only because of how fast it is. So yeah. A prime example of this is the April KC Cup, where two Mass Hero decks- hey! <laughs> this is what I'm talking about here. Yeah, these two decks were just so fast. They got Global Rank 1 and Global Rank 2. It's won the event and many other hero decks topped. And this is a deck known for being an OTK style quick win deck that either loses when you interrupt its combo or wins if you don't. Yeah, this is a very frail deck. There's a reason why this, and what was funny too about this deck specifically is that this was not considered meta in like any tournaments, like Duel Links metas tournaments, for example. It wasn't considered meta at all, but out of nowhere, it just came up in the KC Cup just for how quick and OTK friendly it was. Now, don't get me wrong. Masked Heroes were a good deck and still are. But in a normal tournament format, they were only considered tier 3. Bro, it's like Loom is reading my fucking mind. I did say it wasn't on the tier list, but yeah, as you can see, it's not top tier compared to these other decks. As shown via the Duel Links meta tier list at the time, which they were set to tier 3. It's obviously a really good deck, but definitely nothing you could expect to take a ton of the top placings, let alone the top two spots of a major event. Yes, sir! Now, because of the KC Cup, the next installment of the DLM tier list boosted them up a tier as it takes the KC Cup results into account. Oh, it does? I didn't know that. It makes sense, but I didn't know that. And to demote them soon after, due to poor performance, when forced to play in the normal tournament format again. And if you want even more examples, both Lunar Light and Drag Unity, again, both extremely fast decks, both finished in the top 100. <laughs> and these- Yeah, these decks are pretty scrubbed here too. Like most of the like tier one decks in the game just mop the floor with these decks, but the tier one decks are not as fast OTK friendly decks as these ones are. So yeah. Decks were not even considered tiered and had no place being played in a tournament meta, but due to the shitty speed format, were able to finish highly. A huge factor in this is a change they made to the cup, limiting the amount you could lose and capping the minimum amount you could gain. So since it's I don't remember this change, system, you but then again, I don't play stage 2 that much. Someone with a higher rating than you, you would gain more points. Likewise, oh. if you would lose to someone with a lower rating than you, you would lose oh. more points. This meant that once you reach the very top of the ladder, it would become a real struggle to gain points, as majority of your matches would be against people lower rating than you. So even with a 50% win rate, you would drop down as every loss would be worth way more than every win. Uh, yeah, that's kind of scuffed. That's really scuffed. This is how it should be, as it meant there was kind of a soft cap at the top of the ladder where nobody could really grind into oblivion, and there'll be no way to catch up. Now since they added the cap of 1200 a loss and 1000 a win, the highest rank has been inflated drastically, with the bunch making the grind a lot more painful for those with less time or for those that want to play slower decks. My final complaint, and probably the most important complaint for the general community, is stage 2 rewards. Stage 2 rewards are garbage. There is literally no incentive for a casual player to even try in stage 2 for just how dog shit the rewards are. There is no gems. You get tickets that are not valued at all because of the fact that they're only tickets for that are for farmable cards. And I don't understand why Konami hasn't done this yet, but they seriously should add dream tickets into stage 2 rewards. They need to replace tickets with dream tickets and add some gems to the stage 2 rewards instead of just tickets that you can get from farming and simply playing the game and gold and then they also give you gold and gold is fucking useless especially if you are a player that's been playing this game religiously because you already have millions upon millions of gold so yeah they need to fix stage two and i hope loom gives some good recommendations but yeah i personally think they should add drink tickets and gems and let's see what loom has to say now this isn't a complaint about oh julius just doesn't get enough gems it's a complaint for there is literally no prize for anyone that doesn't finish first place mm -hmm. there are five prizes given out for stage two there is obviously the world's invite which is given to one singular person. Pug champ. There is tickets, not dream tickets. Not dream tickets, it's these bum tickets. Just tickets. 
which to be honest, I find really insulting considering people who place in top 100 already well, have all these cards anyways. I still think that they should give dream tickets to these high rewards anyways, and Konami wouldn't be losing much profit anyways, simply for the fact that these players that are already top tier players in the game, they probably already have most of the cards and probably wasted a ton of money on your game already. So giving them some dream tickets wouldn't be losing much profit on your end. But yeah, they need to get rid of these tickets right here because these are so fucking useless and they're only for just like farmable cards and whatnot it would be super 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 cool if like um like the top 10 players can get a prismatic dream ticket so then to get the prismatic card of their choice that'd be an awesome prize because they have never released a prismatic dream ticket but prismatic dream tickets are in the game's code and i think it'd be really cool if they, yeah the top 10 players could get a prismatic ur ticket and then the top 100 players can get a prismatic sr ticket so then they can get like their favorite card in the game as a prismatic or whatever the case may be playing the game a little while, and therefore have every single relevant card the tickets offer. Yep. Not that there's a whole lot of relevant cards that the tickets offer in the first place. Yeah. There's gold, which again, if you've been playing the game a little while, is about you as have a lot. as a currency as Scud is as a character. Hey, I am glad you agree that this character is fucking useless. Again, Konami, if you're somehow watching this video to this point, please add Misty into the game. Please and thank you. Now that I've given my complaints, let's talk solutions. Solutions, so let's go. The grind being way too long and too much of a commitment. An easy solution would just be to reduce the length of the event. I don't like this solution too much, as even a 48 hour grind seems kind of long to me. I don't think this would fix any problems. It, it, it could potentially make worse problems if it was a shorter event anyways. ...better than three full days. Another more complex solution would be a cap on the amount of jewels you can play. So let's say 200 for the whole event. That way, people wouldn't be able to simply speedrun the event and slow decks could catch up. Obviously though, this does come with some issues like people at the higher ranks may have trouble finding matches, since a lot of people would reach the cap and stop playing, but I think if the cap is set appropriately, this shouldn't be too much of an issue with the player base Duel Links has. This issue is also fixed by capping the amount of games someone can play, so the higher win rates shine over those who can just spam out a ridiculous amount of games. But honestly, an easy solution would just be to revert the god awful change where the cap on the amount of points you could lose and cap on the minimum you could gain was added. This would just stop people climbing to oblivion for starters. At the very least, if you don't want to change the format of the cup, just give us another PvP style event or game mode for those who are more interested in the more common tournament style formats with a bracket, side decks, best of threes, stuff like that. <gasps> Call of Duty Black Ops 3! By the way, subscribe to my second channel for Black Ops 3 content and Cold War Zombie content. For people who are more interested in the quality of games rather than the quantity of games they play. And finally, rewards. This one should be an easy fix, with so many solutions available. Just give me something for climbing. Would that be some gem value, change the tickets to dream tickets, yes. more diversity on the icons, so yes. like I said earlier, rather than bronze, silver, gold, add iron, plant, and diamond, card sleeves, they could even- Ooh, that's true. They should do They should do custom card sleeves. They should definitely do custom card sleeves. You can make brand new rewards, like you unlock new taunts for different characters exclusive to each KC cup. Uh, that would be a cool idea if they did do special taunts for characters. The only issue is, is the fact that they would have to rehire the voice actor to do a special taunt. And also, depending on which character that they choose, some of the players that would grind that much to reach that certain level to get that taunt, probably could be for a character they wouldn't care about. Cool idea. But yeah, let's stick to like the card sleeves, mat. I think they should do like really sick custom card sleeves and mats for those high rank plays. So then when you do actually have it, when you're like in the just leveling up the ladder or playing in tournaments, you can like flex like, hey, I was a KC Cup player and that opponent will know the entire duel that I was a top KC Cup player instead of just through an icon. There is honestly infinite possibilities for I agree. to choose from. I agree. Just anything is better than adding to my 12 million gold yes. or 90 plus tickets yes. I never use. All yes. right. Dream tickets, gems, exclusive mat and sleeves. Make it happen, Konami. Subscribe to Loom. Well, that was a very interesting video. So my final thoughts on this KC Cup rant video from your boy Dual Link's best decks. I definitely agree with a lot of his points throughout the video. There's like, I'd say like 90 to 95% of the video I do definitely agree with. Now with actually making changes to stage two of the KC Cup, it I think on paper it sounds easy to do, but it's, I think it's actually a lot harder to fix than people realize. 
I don't think there's a good proper solution that would appease all the players that are at that high competitive level to fix stage two. But I would love if, yeah, Konami could figure out a system kind of similar to other ranked games where it could be a skill based system that they can um, calculate in the game to properly assess who is the best player. But the only issue is that this is a card game. This is through win rates and all that stuff right there. So there's not really a proper way to do it. Maybe what they can also do too is that they could just completely revamp Duel Links's um, KC Cup to possibly being something similar to the TCG and OCG where they can do a tournament style um, for competitiveness and for figuring out who's the best player. They can do a bunch of different tournaments and then whoever wins those X tournaments can go to a grand tournament and then they can get that qualification for the world championship. I think if they just did it entirely in a tournament system, I think that might be a better way to assess on um, people. But then at the same time, that would make it to where dual links would be very similar to the TCG and OCG. So in some ways, I would say agree to just kind of keep stage two how it is because this is a video game at the end of the day and i guess it has been working for these past you know years and whatnot or completely switch it to a tournament style i guess that's like my final thoughts as of october 7th i don't know my opinion is going to change on this all the time though i wasn't expecting this video to be a casey cup rant i was just seeing dear konami it's time to fix your game so i thought loom was going to talk about everything about uh you know dual links and not just the casey cup but it was still a fun video to watch nonetheless so that's just my random thoughts as it is right now but yeah let me know what you guys think about this video if you watch to the end of this video throughout this entire recording session i could tell that my thoughts and opinions were very rambly and all over the place and i don't have like a concrete um, idea on how to properly fix the kc cup but i still hope you guys enjoyed this reaction video nonetheless let me know in the comment section down below too if you guys want to see other reaction videos from your boy watt double seven if you guys got like a chuckle out of this video and whatnot let me know and yeah be sure to go subscribe to loom for this epic content and other than that's gonna be it for me thank you guys so much for watching today's video and i'll go see you guys next one adios everybody